It's time to show you the block diagram of a computer. This applies to laptops, desktop, this applies to Windows and Mac and, and really every processor, every computer. Um, and I'm sure that there are going to be people who say, well, you missed that part or you missed that part. And this is not exactly how I look at it, but I go back to my disclaimer from before. I'm going to show you how I see computers. I am very technical. I did uh, get into PCs before PCs uh, were known to be PCs. I had the first one was actually an IBM personal computer. Uh, this is how I make my decisions. This is how I look at a PC. Okay, these are the most important parts. The first one that we typically uh, look to is the one that's called the CPU. CPU is the central processing unit. It used to be that there was only one CPU. Now what we have is we have something that's called a core inside of the computer. So this is a core can is, is really one CPU. And then there is another one and another one and there could be more. Uh, looking just yesterday, uh, I think the laptop that I'm using today, and this is a laptop that I bought probably close to about two years ago, has eight cores inside of that chip that's called CPU. So those are eight processors that can do things in parallel. Generally, the higher performing or higher performance requiring software pieces require more cores and can handle multiple cores. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Another part that you have here is called cache. I'm going to talk about cache in a few minutes. I'm, I'm not going to go uh, into too much detail right now. Now, the, the last thing that we have is we have clock, or I should say clock speed. So this is how fast do these cores or CPUs run. That's, that's an important part. Another one is something that's called RAM. RAM is random access memory. RAM is the memory the, uh, that the computer uses most of the time to work on. I'm, I'm going to call it the second level of RAM and, and you'll see why I mean uh, or second level of memory. One thing about RAM is when you turn the computer off, whatever is in the RAM disappears. So RAM is kind of the, uh, your work pad, the, what the computer works on right now until you shut it down. So where is everything else? Well, everything else stays in the disk. You're going to see several terms. You're going to see HDD, which is a hard disk drive. This was the first type of uh, disk. Those were uh, mechanical and, and I'll actually I'll show you what they look like. And today you're using a lot more of something that's called SSD, which is solid state disk. And if you think about it, it's like your USB flash drive uh, or your SD card, except it has more storage and it's inside of the computer. What's special about these is that these, uh, if, if this is a hard disk drive, so really something that turns, it's magnetic. If it's a solid state drive, it's flash technology. And what's important about it, when you turn the power down, they, they remember what's in there. So what do you have there? You do use part of it for operations, ongoing operation. This is where your data is. This is where your programs are. Okay, now, uh, if you have a video editing computer or a gaming computer, they may have a separate unit that's called GP GPU. GPU stands for Graphic Processing Unit. Uh, NVIDIA is one of the companies that makes most of them, probably the most prominent of them. M any laptop or computer that does not have a separate GPU has some level of GPU, something like Intel graphics that's part of the CPU or the motherboard chipset. Uh, but GPUs are kind of just like uh, CPUs. They have multiple cores. This is supposed to be the word core. Uh, they have a certain speed and they have their own cache and i'll talk about cache in a second one more thing that you have in a computer is display 
Obviously, otherwise it's a little hard to communicate with the computer or know what the computer is doing without having a display. So you're going to have a display and we'll spend some time talking about display. And finally, what you have in the computer is I'm going to call it I.O., which stands for input and output. This is where you have things like, uh, well, I'm going to write HDMI here or VGA or any other video connection, but typically they really come out of the GPU or somewhere else here. But, you know, generally I can look at them as input output. This is your USB. This is your Ethernet. This is your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything else. These are the inputs and outputs. Now, obviously things need to communicate and connect between them. And so we have something in the center of the, uh, this computer that's called the bus. And the bus is this component that actually has it, it, all, all it does is it allows units uh, or, or blocks to communicate with one another. And when they communicate with one another, by the way, in case uh, you can't see, I just looked at the monitor, in case you can't see what the GPU looks like, I'll, I'll raise it up a little and you can see that the GPU is really just a copy of what the CPU looks like. So it has cores, multiple cores, it has frequency, it has cache, and uh, that's it. So you're not missing a lot by not seeing that block here. The bus is like a highway. This is how the different components connect with one another. So everything connects to this bus. Now, again, I'm simplifying this, and if there's somebody there that is a uh, computer expert and so on, you're going to say, well, there are actually several buses that, that run there. Sure, but this is the main bus. The main bus has a speed. So I want you to think of this as a highway. I want you to think about the fact that all the cars in the highway drive in a certain distance one after the other, and they can drive in a certain speed. Now, you want to have more lanes in the bus, and you want to allow a higher speed limit. That is your bus speed, and this is also whether you have a 64-bit bus or a 32-bit bus, and the buses can actually go to 128 but just uh, or 256, but just behave like a 64-bit bus, but they allow uh, faster and faster communication between the components. Now, the most important part, I said you want to have pretty good access to the disk, but the disk is where typically you're going to store store uh, data when you're done with it, get data when you need it and to start working on it, get the programs when you need them or store the programs when you downloaded them. But for the most part, the CPU needs very, very, very fast storage to operate on right now. And so it used to be that the RAM was that storage. However, even the RAM, and the RAM is typically a lot faster than the hard disk drive. You, the ability that the CPU has to access storage here in the RAM is much faster than on the disk. However, that's not even the case anymore because now we have, and I told you I'll get back to it, something that's called cache. Cache is even a faster RAM, and sometimes there are different levels of cache, even faster. It's smaller than this RAM, it's a lot faster and mainly it's a lot faster because it is inside of the CPU. So the fastest operations, the immediate operations the CPU is working on are here. When the CPU is not working on something, it releases that to the RAM. I'm going to use a different color. It releases that information to the RAM and let it stay in the RAM. Sometimes we don't need this information right now, so we even release it to the disk to a certain place in the disk that's kind of a scratch pad where we say, well, we don't need it right now. The RAM is bigger than the cache. As, and as I said, again, I'll bring it up, uh, the GPU has cache as well. The bigger those caches are, the more the CPU can, the faster CPU can do things. Let me look at the, if there's anything else. Uh, yes, I wanted to just make a comment. There are different components here in the computer. And the different components, each one of them, can have higher performance or lower performance 
it can have higher costs typically associated with higher performance or lower cost. Bottom line is it's like a chain. A chain is as strong as its weakest link. And the problem that I see people sometimes run into is when they spend a lot of money getting a very high power CPU and not getting enough RAM for that CPU. So this CPU overly powered, not enough RAM to operate on, so you're not gonna get the best performance. Or they get good CPU, good RAM, and the disk, they use a hard disk drive as the main disk, the system disk, which is much, much, much slower than a solid state disk or an SSD, especially an M.2 PCI Express NVMe, I'll explain all of these, uh, faster disk. Or they get, they spend a lot of money on the CPU, not realizing that if they got a GPU, a graphic processing unit, it's going to offload a lot of the graphic functions off of the CPU. The display, you, you may not get a display that's powerful enough, or you may get a display that is so detailed and 4K display that the CPU is just going to, you're, you're, you're gonna bring the CPU and maybe even the GPU down to their knees. Uh, finally, the I.O. What, what do you want to spend on uh, in the I.O.? So uh, keep in mind that what you need is a balanced system that would support what you want to use it for. You don't want to overspend on any component because you think that's the most important component. I got people saying, how much RAM do you need a, in a computer? Well, the, the answer to that is, is another question. First of all, what CPU do you have? What disk drive do you have? What do you need it for? Because for certain applications, for my daughters that go to college, for my wife that uses that to teach, you don't need more than 8 gigabyte of RAM. And I'll talk more about that in detail when I get there. You don't need more than 8 gigabyte of RAM. But uh, if you need graphic, uh, then you're going to need a lot more than that. A lot more than 8 gigabyte. 16, uh, maybe even 16 is not going to be enough. I want to make one more comment. And uh, here is my conspiracy theory. And my conspiracy theory is that the hardware and software companies, so the Microsofts and the Adobe's and, and others, uh, software companies and the hardware companies like the Intel that make the CPUs and the memory companies and, and then the Dell's and HP's and Lenovo's and other uh, computer manufacturers of the world have colluded to get us to buy new stuff every two years or every three years because they, that's how they stay in business. I'm not going to rule out that this is a collusion, a, uh, a conspiracy, but in reality, this is what happens. A new computer comes out. The software companies go, oh, there is more performance that's available to us. We can improve performance. We can improve functionality. And they create software that all of a sudden people who have the older generation computer their computer is not supportive of enough of that. So they're going to buy a newer computer, a more powerful computer that can support the new uh, software or the new tools. And, and once they do that, the software companies go, well, you know, we have a new generation of computers, so why don't we add more functionality, add more features? I can tell you that I had a desktop before I bought my, my video editing laptop about two years ago. I had a desktop. I probably had it for about maybe four years, maybe even less than that. It was pretty powerful when I bought it. But when I got to buying this laptop, that desktop, when I generated when I uh, produced a five minute video rendering that video took about and it did have a GPU a graphic processor from from Nvidia took about 30 minutes a five minute video took about 30 minutes to render and, and create which is fine you know you get the computer to do it and then you go and do something else except you can do something else on that computer because you're going to be using the same resources then I got the laptop the laptop reduced that time from 30 minutes to 25 seconds. It reduced the time from rendering a five minute video from 30 minutes on the older desktop to 25 seconds. And, and that was a significant uh, improvement. And, and I was using relatively same software, but again, the software Premiere Pro, what I'm using from Adobe, uh, kept on improving and um, 
required more processing power and, and more capabilities from the uh, computer and therefore I had to uh, get a new one and, and probably I'm about a year away from getting yet another one the next generation that would make it uh, even shorter because I'm, I keep on loading it with more software with more functionality so you know it's not a real conspiracy although it works really great for hardware and component and software companies but that's that's why you're getting to replace one uh, every uh, two three years um, not not necessarily a lot more than that 